Welcome to Oberammergau, Germany, a village of roughly 5,200 people located in southern Bavaria. Surrounded by majestic mountain peaks and beautiful alpine meadows, Oberammergau is not that different from many rural farming communities. The pace of life is pleasant and easygoing. People go about their daily lives with a serenity that reflects the beauty around them. But every 10 years, all that changes. Over half a million people from around the world descend on this tiny village over a five month period to witness a tradition that dates back nearly 400 years. Hello, I'm Rob Fuquay, and it's my privilege to be your guide in this study of Jesus' passion from the perspective of the Oberammergau Passion Play. I'm standing on the stage of the 5,000 seat Passion Play Theater. The play has taken place on this site since the early 1800s. Once a decade, the people of Oberammergau step away from being farmers and doctors and teachers and waiters and waitresses to become actors and actresses in the greatest story ever told. But why? Why do the people put on this play? Why have the citizens of Oberammergau kept this tradition since 1634? To find some answers, let's go up the street. The secret to Oberammergau's passion play is answered here at the parish church, also called the Peter and Paul Church. This is where the people gathered and made an important promise to God one evening in 1633. Now that was right in the middle of the Thirty Years' War, roughly a century after the start of the Protestant Reformation. Ferdinand II, the Holy Roman Emperor, forced all of the citizens to adhere to Catholicism, breaking a decades-old agreement allowing individual states to choose whether to be Protestant or Catholic. The dispute quickly became an all-out war, not only over religion, but the control of Europe. Over eight million people died as a result, not just from the fighting, but also from disease known as the plague. Now, while the town of Oberammergau had gone to great lengths to protect itself from the plague, it still found its way here, and very quickly, 84 people had died. The people came inside the church here, and they prayed in front of this very crucifix. They asked God to spare them any more deaths, and they made this vow. Every 10 years, the devout representation of the sufferings and death of Christ should be given so that God would have mercy and free our village from the appalling sickness. From that day forward, there were no more deaths and beginning the next year, the people of Oberammergau put on their first passion play. But what made the people turn to God in such a way? This is the Ettal Monastery, a 14th century Benedictine monastery located above the village of Oberammergau. The monastery held a special relationship with the village made even more significant because of the upheaval of the Thirty Years' War. The people looked here for order and stability. The deep grounding of religious faith in the life of the community is what made them turn to God for help and for comfort. In 1633, during the time of plague, the people of Oberammergau believed God was punishing them, but didn't know why. The belief was that God needed to be appeased. So some people built churches, and some prayed to the Holy Spirit, others put their work into passion plays. There have been a lot of places where passion plays were highly praised, and when people watched them, they experienced peace with God. So, that's why Oberammergau committed to this passion play, especially since we are surrounded by monasteries where it is common to have passion plays as dramatic theater. No one knows for certain, but that is the commonly believed origin story.
This town is like a giant picture of our lives. So many of the rituals and the traditions that have shaped the people of Oberammergau go back to a vow made by their ancestors in 1633. Vows have a lasting and powerful impact upon our lives. What are the vows that have had an impact on your life? Maybe you have parents who stood in front of an altar or a legal authority and said, I do. Perhaps you have someone who adopted you or a, a guardian who vowed to look after you and protect you. Maybe you've got great friends in your life who have pledged to always be there for you no matter what. What are the vows that have shaped your life? As people of faith, we recognize that we're all the product of vows, but not just the vows of other people, the vows of God. The Bible records many of these vows, the vows of God to never give up on us, to give us a future and a hope, to love us steadfastly. What are the vows of God that mean the most to you? And finally, what are the vows you've made that define your life? What are the vows you've made to God, to yourself, or to other people? We may forget our vows or lose our desire to keep them, but here in Oberammergau, it's different. The people live by a vow their ancestors made nearly four centuries ago. It doesn't seem like an obligation or a drudgery. It's more like a source of pride and joy. What can we learn about vows in this place?